I'm Jay Holbin, and welcome to FIB Online. What you're about to see is a small part of one of the lectures that I do for an organization called Hollywood Shorts. It's a six-part lecture series on the art and science of cinematography that's sponsored by Panavision. This is a segment from the very first in the series on the fundamentals of cinematography. For more on Hollywood Shorts, visit HollywoodShorts.com. Hope you enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to FIB Online. Thanks for watching. So when we're talking about light, light can be bright or dim. It can be colored or white. It can be hard or soft. So these are qualities of light when we're talking about describing light. And what we're really going to look at right now, because we've already looked at the colors of light, and we've already talked about brightness and dim, we're going to talk about hard light and soft light, the two primary qualities of light. And the first one is hard light. We're going to define the quality of light by the shadow transfer, is what we're called. And that, it's the transference between the highlight area and the shadow area. It's called the shadow transfer value. And the sharper, more narrow that transfer value is, the harder the light is. So the sharper, more defined that shadow is, the more hard light that we're using. In this case, on this particular actor, we have a very defined difference between light and shadow. This is a very hard light. And the different sources that create hard light are the sun, direct sunlight, or arc lights, or Fresnel lights, ellipsoidal spots, open face lights, or even bare light bulbs can create very, very hard light. Okay, and hard lights are naturally high in contrast. So we look at a couple of examples of different hard light. Again, here we're creating a definite shadow off of a light source that's coming onto her. There is a defined line between light and shadow, so we can tell that that's a hard light source. And hard light can define texture, like it's defining it in the rock wall here in this particular set. Hard light coming at an angle there is helping to accentuate the texture of that wall so that we're seeing these cracks and crevices show up. So this is an example of very hard sunlight outside. Uh, my hand is over a, a whiteboard, and we see a very, very well-defined, sharp shadow created from hard sunlight. And also hard light off to the side here is defining the texture of this rock. It's showing us every nook and cranny. It's accentuating the texture of this particular rock. So what we see in hard light are very uh, direct rays of light that are coming onto a source, generally from a pin source. And as it turns out, light quality, either hard or soft, is defined by the size of the light source in relationship to the subject. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more in a second. One of the great factors of having hard light and having these really defined rays is that if I introduce an object into this light, I can create a very sharp shadow. I can define exactly where the cut of light is going to be, where I want light to appear and where I don't want it to appear. The further away I get from the source of the light with this object, the more sharper defined this shadow is going to be. If I move this object closer to the light source, I'm going to get a little bit more of a spread of rays of light, and it's actually going to soften the cut, so I don't get such a sharp cut of shadow. So the smaller the light source and the further away that it is, the more defined my shadow is going to be. Now soft light is inherently low in contrast. And what we're seeing in soft light is our shadow edge transfer is very gradual. It's not as defined. We're seeing a very gradual transition between light and shadow in this particular image. And examples of soft light would be, instead of having direct sunlight, we now bring out clouds. And what's happening when we bring out the clouds? We have the sun, which is a very, very large ball of fire, but it's very far away. So that's a hard source of light. And now we introduce clouds. So suddenly we don't have this pin source of light. We have clouds now become our larger light source. And it's significantly larger than the pinpoint of the sun in the sky. And that makes a softer light source. So we have sun, this ball of sun in the sky, which creates very hard light. But as soon as it gets clouds in the sky, it diffuses the light passing from the sun, and it creates a very, very large light source. It's like using a diffuser, right? Over That's exactly what it is. That's what clouds are to the sunlight, is a large diffuser. And as a matter of fact, a cloudy day like this, you get an almost shadowless day because we have such soft light that we don't have any hard aspect to create an actual shadow outside. So this is the same example of what I did earlier, uh, except now it's in soft light situations. So it's not getting hard light from the sun, this is 
a cloudy day, and you notice that there isn't any definition to shadow for my hand at all. As a matter of fact, we don't really see a shadow there. You see just barely kind of a hint of very soft shadow at the fingers, but there's no longer a defined aspect. And if we look at the same rock, lit from the same direction, but now we have diffused the light to create a softer light, it tends to hide the texture a little more than hard light does. Hard light accentuates the texture, we see more contrast. Soft light tends to minimize textures. Now imagine that we're shooting human faces instead of rocks. Soft light will tend to soften features, soften imperfections, and hard light will exaggerate them. So if you have that aging actress who wants to look like she's 16, you don't want to light her with hard light. And this is an example of a very young, beautiful actress in two different types of lighting. Very, very hard light. We see that this shadow edge transfer is very sharp going on in here. This is direct sunlight, and this is open shade. And there really is there's a very gradual shadow down here, but we don't have this real sharp definition. Both can be beautiful. It depends how they're used. If we're putting this light source through diffusion. Now this diffusion becomes our new source. It's no longer, the light bulb isn't our source anymore. We've now increased the size of our light source by putting a piece of diffusion in front of it, and that becomes our new apparent light source. The larger the source is in relation to the distance to the subject, the softer the light's going to be. So if I have a light bulb here, and I put a two by two frame of diffusion in front of it, I've gone from a little teeny one inch pin source to a two foot by two foot source and it's going to soften the quality of that light. But if I then back that off five feet, I'm now hardening the light because I'm getting further away. So it is the size of the light source in relationship to the distance of your subject. So when I put this diffusion in front of the light, now I got light going everywhere. It's no longer direct beams of light like it was with hard light. Now it's, it's all over the place. If we increase the size of this light source, so now I've increased the size of my diffusion, and I back the light off a little bit to make sure that I fill this diffusion so I get a nice even light. This light that's going all over the place goes even more all over the place. And it's even softer. So when I get rays that are going all over the place, I get less defined shadows. I tend to smooth out features a little bit.